Cinco de Mayo, 9.20 p.m. How's it going, everyone? What we have going on today here is we're going to go over some brainwave stuff, some frequencies. We're going to uh, look at waves and how, how that is all tied to all of existence and how we perceive existence and pretty much everything else. All right, so let's move right away up into it. Uh, let's back up a bit. So brainwaves, uh, neural oscillations or brainwaves are rhythmic or repetitive patterns of neural activity in the central nervous system. Neural tissue can generate oscillatory activity in many ways driven either by mechanisms within individual neurons or by interactions between neurons. To, uh, things that people ask, what are the four types of brainwaves? You have beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And gamma waves and uh, we'll go to that one so brain waves with EEG these brain waves are measured in terms of electrical activity over time and the relative dominance of different types of waves and again this is uh, sciencedirect.com so 2.1 Dot one brain waves. Brain waves are oscillating electrical voltages in the brain, measuring just a few millionths of a volt. There are five widely recognized brain waves, and the main frequencies of human EEG waves are listed in Table Two Dot One, along with their characteristics. Okay, so all of reality is perceived by by really, really, really small electrical signals, <laughs> basically. All right, and we have uh, the frequency bands. You have gamma, beta, alpha, theta, delta. And obviously there's reasons why they use these words. These, you know, they're uh, Roman, uh, Roman Greco type shit from back in the days. But basically they're, um, they're grouped by, um, by frequency. You have, you can see the hertz right there. An example, beta is 12 to 35 hertz. And here are the waveforms. Okay. The brainwave patterns are unique for every individual. Various regions of the brain do not emit the same brainwave frequency simultaneously. An EEG signal between electrodes placed in the scalp consists of many waves with different characteristics. The large amount of data received from even one sig single EEG recording makes interpretation difficult. The brainwave patterns are unique for every individual. So clearly it makes no sense to try to make everyone follow a same agenda. Um, it's not, it's, it doesn't make sense to try to get everyone to act the same way or behave the same way or think the same way because that's not natural. Functional pathology of cranial nerves. Brainwaves are propagated along the perineural system. And blend with this continuous current, the result is a powerful vector of homeostasis. This balancing force is a key element in tissue repair and probably in all internal recovery processes. A patient's positive attitude is indispens indispensable to healing. The brain waves he or she generates extend through the perineural system as far as the injured part of the body, wherever this might be. Now, what they're talking about here, right here, um, you know, there's that term like, oh, you're going to burn your brain cells. They'll be like, yeah, when, when, once you kill your brain cells, they don't come back. That's that's totally misleading. The, in fact, there's been many, many um, cases where someone has suffered some type of head injury, uh, freak accidents or somewhat, and like part of their head is completely just off. And they're able to recover and, and still function and uh, live life as normal as they can with the you know, deformed head, but that, that has happened. So I, I, I know a lot, I've said it many times that the mind, the human mind is not in the brain. I've said a few things. I, I've also said there is no sound in the brain. <laughs> I've also said that, that, that light is basically sound that your eyes can hear. 
and this this is and we're, we'll get as we get through this you'll start seeing why I say these things okay so let's back back out of this uh, we already went over what are brain waves then we know there's different types of brain waves we went over that all right now it's it's, it's known that and and as you see right here, as you see right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right here and we're gonna bounce to another one. Does your brain generate electricity? Now here's where I'm gonna go over to where mainstream mainstream science intentionally misleads people. Okay, traditional electricity is generated by the motion of free electrons. And see how they say traditional? But the electricity generated by neurons results from the motion of sodium and potassium ions across the cell membrane. The, the, cell membrane. the electrical signals only help to transfer information from the cell body through the axon to the synapse. Oh, for some reason, not letting me click on that. Rochester.edu. This was from 2015. You know what? Let's let's not go there because that's kind of far back. 2015 is too much. Let's go to the electrical signals. In an electrical signal, the voltage, current, or frequency or signal will be. Okay, so, oh, so according what so what they're saying is this. They're saying on this on this last one. Where you go? Oh man! So your brain generates enough electricity to power a light bulb. Your brain contains about 100 billion mic microscopic cells called neurons. So many it would take over 3,000 years to count them all. This one was from 2015. I was going to go that one, but then I, right when I tried clicking on that, I seen this 2021 underneath my eyes. Well, my nose. <laughs> How your brain makes and uses uh, energy. As you guys can see, this is the University of Queensland, Australia. And it's the Queensland Brain Institute. Your brain is arguably, arguably the hungriest organ in the body, consuming roughly 20% of your energy each day. Most of that energy is produced by tiny structures inside cells, kind of mitochondria, which break down complex car carbohydrates from food into simple sugars. It's basically glucose watch. Considering the brain is made up of around 100 billion neurons, that gives you any idea of how much energy the brain uses to needs to survive and the mitochondria are responsible for that, says Dr. Stephen Zurin of UQ's uh, Queenland Brain Institute. Intriguingly, much of what we know about mitochondria originated with the study of bacterial evolution. And I'm not going to go into that bullshit story. Um... The next, the next frontier is to understand the nanoscopic mechanics of how this occurs and to identify, identify possible interventions to prevent mitochondrial... This is not, it has nothing to do with what we were talking about. From a biological point of view, it is mitochondria that have literally powered the explosion of evolution in complex life, which is energetically demanding. Well, that's going in a different direction of what, what, what I'm leading to. So that's basically the energy. Okay, so as you can, as we see, let me back up. So the brain supposedly makes its own electricity, regardless of them saying mitochondria bacterial blah 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 that's on a whole different the whole different direction of, of any of this okay but what they're trying to say is that 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 it's not like traditional 
traditional electricity that's be outside of your human body and it's trying to separate you and isolate you what they're trying to do right there is is i trying to lead, lead you to believe that since your your brain makes its own electricity that since it makes its own electri- electricity the mind must be isolated that's the imp- that's the implication if it's making its own energy then then it's isolated it's making its own thoughts right and it's totally isolated it, it's something within you like it, without that you supposedly you would have no thought or you would have you know supposedly no consciousness or or no 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 way of life no form of life and it says how your brain makes its own electricity you go over and over and they even tell that to the kids your brain makes its own electricity but we all know that electricity is a circuit there's no way that you could just make it on your own and you're just and and it, it comes out of Obviously, the electricity is coming from other places and it comes to you, then your body processes it. And it doesn't just, it doesn't, it's not just part, it's, just, it's not just with the brain, you know, I mean, it includes all the other parts to it. And so that's why when I, when I said, like, look at this, this image right here, we see the, the, the imagery shows the human mind, the human, the, the human silhouette with the mind. And, and and you can see the frequencies are extending beyond the brain, beyond the the boundary of the carnal body, and is is radiating outwards towards into space. And I'm not talking about the type. When I say space, um, I'm, I mean it in its true form. I mean everything around us. I'm not talking about outer space or deep space or interstellar. No, none of that crap. All right. If anything. If if I'm gonna talk about any type of other space that's that you know that that's not physically that you know where we exist or um, I'll talk about the inner space you know and by that and here's what we're talking about the frequency that's for the inner space of everything okay so the signals as we seen on that last on that on that that nice little silhouette imagery of of how you know of electromagnetic or electrical signals and white waves um, extending beyond the physical person here we have electrical signals we'll, we'll look that up real quick in an electrical signal the voltage current or frequency of the signal may be varied to represent information any information may be convi- conveyed by an analog signal often such a signal is measured in response to changes in physical phenomena such as sound light temperature position or pressure and that goes for everything the nervous system, everything, everything. Um, our cells all react together, so we can have feel pressure, sense danger, um, sense sense direction, sense temperature. It's not just taste, touch, and smell. There's other, there's there's other, there's other senses that we have. What types? What types of electrical signals? Oh, for some reason, it doesn't let me click on that. Well, anyways, in signal processing, a signal is a function that conveys information about a phenomenon. Now, when they start using words like phenomenon, they're basically saying they really don't know. <laughs> Any quantity that can vary over uh, space and time can be used as a signal to share messages between observers. Okay, and so electrical signals of nerve cells. We'll check that one out. That's this one, National Library of Medicine. Uh, Nerve cells generate electrical signals that transmit information. Although neurons are not intrinsically good conductors of electricity, they have evolved. They have evolved elaborate mechanisms for generating electrical signals based on the flow of ions across their plasma membranes. Ordinarily, neurons generate a negative potential called the resting membrane potential that can be measured by recording the voltage between the inside and outside of nerve cells. The action potential abolishes the negative resting potential and makes 
the transmembrane potentially transiently positive. Action potentials are propagated along the length of axons and are the fundamental signal that carries information from one place of another in the nervous system. Generation of both the resting potential and the action potential can be understood in terms of the ne nerve cell's selective permeability permeability blah, to different ions and of the normal distribution of these ions across the cell membrane. Okay, so as, as so we can see how the nerves nerves are are basically just a a medium. They're they're the they're they're um they're not where where the electricity comes from. All right, they're not where the electricity comes from. And even though they do say they say that that the that the human brain makes its own electricity. See what I'm saying? They intentionally they intentionally mislead people to get and to to misconstrue these things. Okay. Now we have electromagnetic radiation. In physics, electromagnetic radiation consists of waves of the electromagnetic field propagating through space, carrying electromagnetic radiant energy. It includes radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, uh, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. And there they go using the gamma. We already know that there's gamma, there's gamma waves in the brain. And all of this is based on, let me see, transfer, uh, all electromagnetic uh, waves are transverse waves, can travel through a vacuum, travel exactly the same speed in the vacuum, the speed of light, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's, now they're getting uh, weird with it. <laughs> um, transfer energy from one place to another can be reflected, can be refracted. So there's common properties to waves. And so these electromagnetic waves are around us. Okay? They're around the human body. At the same time, the human body is is making its supposedly is making its own electricity. That's what they say. And then here we have the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, the entire distribution of ele electromagnetic radiation according to frequency or wavelength. There's the frequencies. You can always look these up. Okay. As you can see, the 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 frequency of uh, of the fraction of light in regards to the whole spectrum is very 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 small. Electromagnetic spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, imagine the universe, the spectrum is a range of all types of EM radiation. I mean, and if you go into it about, it, you know, in like you could easily go into an introduction with not NASA science. You could easily use, like, it, they'll, on their own, on their own cartoon right here, it shows that these waves are everywhere, they're everywhere, and they go through your body. Right, they, those waves go through your body. See how that cartoon is right there? Right? So those brains go through your body. And at the same time, your own brain is making electricity. It doesn't matter if they're saying, oh, it's making its own electricity. Because we just seen that the other frequencies are rolling through your body. They're going through everything. Now here's where here, we're, we're gonna get even we're gonna get deeper into this now. It's gonna start to make sense what I'm trying to uh, lead to. So how electricity runs through wire. Now this is the this is the mainstream this is the mainstream crap that they show us. They break the you know the wire is broken. Okay. And the electricity is supposedly running in between the wires, which is not is not really true that's 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 misleading right there let me see this one makes more sense 
okay? So here, here on this, in this circuit, you have the battery, positive and negative, and then the, it, the circuit is, the circuit is closed. Oh, look, it's a globe. The circuit is closed with the, with the, uh, with the globe. <laughs> and, and as you see, oh, lost it there. Okay, as you, as you see, there is a field in between. And then right here, there's a field around as well. Okay. And then down here, you see there's a, you see it all kind of working together. That's what's really happening. There is no really, the electricity is not really running in the metal. It doesn't, it's not doing that. Everything's running around everything else. It circles within circles within circles is what you is what you actually have. That's the true way electricity runs. That includes your brain. That includes the brain. Even though the brain is on its own smaller isolated circuit, it is still interconnected with all the electromagnetic activity that extends beyond the carnal body. All right, you guys. Um, I was going to say, ask how telecommunications affects the mind, but that's not the same as asking how telecommunications affects the brain. <coughs> so the brain is actually what we're trying to look at right now. We're not worrying about the mind. We're talking, I'm trying to, I'm focusing on the brain because there's this mis, you know, there's this misconception or this, 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 uh, this myth that the mind is inside the brain. Which is not this is not even true at all, because so far I've already I, I mean I've already using their mainstream science have already uh, disproven that myth. Already, um, obviously everything is interconnected and everything is electromagnetic and everything has to do with frequencies. Here's another one, another dot gov. Okay, this is a uh, Martin Cordy, PhD. This overview will outline the current results of neuroscience research on the possible effects of digital media use on the human brain, cognition, cognition, and behavior. This is of importance due to the significant amount of time that individuals spend using digital media. Despite several positive aspects of digital media, which can include the capability to effortlessly communicate with peers, even over long distance, and they're being used as training tools for students and the elderly, detrimental effects on our brains and minds have also been suggested. Neurological consequences have been observed related to internet gaming addiction, language development, and processing of emotional signals. However, given that much of the neuroscientific research conducted up to now relies solely on self-reported parameters to assess social media usage, it is argued that neuroscientists need to include data sets with higher precision in terms of what is done on screens for how long and at what age. So, so basically that's what they're so, you know, I'll go a little bit further. Uh, 111 years ago, E.M. Forrester published a short story, The Machine Stops, 1909, the Oxford and Cambridge Review, about a futuristic scenario in which mysterious machines controls everything, from food supply to information technologies. In a situation that evokes internet and digital media events of today in this dystopia, all communication is remote and face-to-face -face meetings no longer happen. 
and we all know, um, you know, on the side of that, on a side note to that, we all know that they used that whole COVID uh, nineteen thing to implement this this digital type of stuff. All right. So moving forward, the machine controls the mindset as it makes everybody dependent on it. In the short story, when the machine stops working, society collapses. Okay. Now, if you want, it, here here's when you when if you want to start everything over. First, you get people to burn their books, throw their books away, and to rely on and depend on easy going, easy using um, technologies. Where like you know you you don't have to depend on a physical book or physical money or physical value of anything. And then all someone has to do is simply turn off the switch. And by you know by the time that everyone realizes that there is no his there is no real true history to back up anything that once someone believed. It's too late, and now you're stuck in a new world, a new world order. So, moving forward, the story raises many questions still relevant today about the impact of digital media and related technology on our brains. This issue of dialogues in clinical neuroscience explores in a multifaceted manner how, by what means, and what what possible effects digital media use affects brain function. For the good, the bad, and the ugly sides of human existence. So, as you guys can see, what where um, I'm not the only one that you know that clearly understands that. I mean, it's not if, or, or you know, it, it, it is. It's totally established. Okay, digital media or telecommunications in all its forms affects physically. And mentally, you know, cogn cognitively affects human beings. Okay? It's, it, it overrides the nervous system is what they're saying. Let's just cut, cut the chase, you know, cut the chase. You know, fuck the bullshit. Let's just go, get, let's just get, get real. They're saying that the uh, telecommunications intent, you know, is intentionally is, engineered and designed to override the human nervous system okay the human mind is not in the brain okay the human mind is not in the brain electrical signals and electrical waves disprove that 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 you know that myth the human mind exists beyond your body that's why you can sense things. You can sense danger. You can sense temperature. You can sense um. You sense direction. You know north from uh, from south in most. If you're walking around, and you're and you know and, and you're keep and you're you're staying aware, you can easily remember north and south, east and west, and that's and and the whole north and south, obviously is a sense that's tied. To polarity, and that's and specifically the the polarity of the plane of existence which we experience reality on. All right, so hopefully you guys get a better understanding about what telecom is, and why it's been broken down into bits, and then now being sold. Information technology is proof that that atomism. Has has like evolved into some insidious form, where they're able to literally grab information, chop it up, and sell it in bits. A gigabyte, a terabyte, megabyte, like this goes on and on. Okay, so I mean, when you guys watch mainstream media, that's that's something you know. I've already pointed out the Smith Munt Act. I've already pointed out. How the Patriot Act allowed us, opened us up to shit that the Smith Munt Act um, is affecting us with now, and and it's all relative now to the SDG Media Compact and the UN 2030. I've tied it all easily that to um, the telecommunications, the telecom giants are definitely, absolutely, 100% tied to central bankers 
they own that they own all that technology they own that they own the infrastructure of all that technology i could pass by a central office and point out that that central office at one time was um was was just called something else but that central office has always been there like right now okay there's one in bigsby uh, in uh in uh, Bigsby Knowles, that I'll pass by and maybe tomorrow or something as I'm passing by there. I'll take a picture of it. This, it's, it's Right now, it's the Frontier Central Office. Okay? Before that, it was the GTE Central Office. And before that, it was the Pacific Bell Central Office. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same building and same medium, same part of the same infrastructure. But it's owned by these central bankers. And in fact, these central bankers all have owned all these lines since the Telegraph. All right, AT&T stands for American Telegraph and Telephone. When the bankers first started moving money, and you go back to see Western Union, right now when you go to um, send money to through Western Union, and it's an, ele it's an electrical signal. <laughs> it's an electrical signal. All right? Back then, they, they, would, they would transfer money with telegraphs. The telegraph system was totally tight, was totally... Um, uh, um, put out in it wasn't invented by the bankers, the central bankers, but it sure as hell was um, deployed. It was definitely deployed across across the oceans. Um, in the 1800s, specifically for banking purposes. Okay, so I can e I, so like I said. It's real simple to tie this all to the UN 2030 and the central bankers. They own every they own the space. Okay? They own the space that has easy access to your inner space. Do you guys comprehend that? Or do you guys even science, bro?